Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, there's like so many Triceratops. Like how- Oh my gosh, and this one's pooping. This one's pooping. And everybody's pooping. Poop fest. What the hell? Hello there everybody, it is me, Fizer Bunny, and welcome back to part 3 of Wildlife Park 3 Dino Invasion. So I was thinking since this is part 3, why not build a Triceratops enclosure in this third part? Because, you know, Triceratops? Three horns? Whatever. Uh, but yeah, I want to build the Triceratops enclosure over here, like across this kind of like body of water. Now the thing is, we couldn't exactly build bridges in this game unless we build it using um, one of the rails from some of the rides that we can have. But I just want to go and make like a, I don't know, maybe a connecting piece of land instead of like a bridge because we couldn't really do that in this in this game yet i'm not sure hopefully they'll add that soon because i feel like a bridge is such an important um infrastructure but we're gonna go and actually um plot out this pathway first because i do want to know where everything goes so i'm just gonna make a nice straight one like that and yeah i i think that's a good um that's a good place to put it and uh yep i think we are gonna outline the triceratops enclosure with a pathway a perimeter pathway just so we know like where everything goes pretty much and i think it's gonna be quite a large enclosure i'm not sure how many t triceratops we need to keep actually to make sure that all of them are happy but i'm pretty sure we probably need maybe three or so and I'm just basing that off of what I learned from making the uh, Pachycephalos <laughs> Pachycephalosaurus, I think. Oh, no, it's Parasaurolophus. I'm pretty sure it is Parasaurolophus. There we go, Parasaurolophus. It's not. I, I I was making mistakes in the last part. I kept calling it Parasaurolophus. I think you're supposed to call it Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus. Uh, yeah. Anyway, who cares? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> dinosaur names are so hard. Like, why can't it be just T-Rex, right? Or, I don't know, Long Neck. <laughs> Uh, but I think that's a, quite a large enclosure already for our Triceratops. Um, cool beans. I don't really think we have a lot of space left in our park here. But we'll figure it out. We shall figure it out. Okay, so I'm gonna go and actually, you know what? I feel like, okay. I feel like the river area needs to be a lot smaller, so... I'm gonna go and make this enclosure slightly larger on the river side because I feel like um, I feel like the river really has no purpose other than just to look nice. <laughs> That's literally the only reason. I really like the idea of having the river though. We are in the Congo River, right? So I feel like that's a really important aspect of choosing the site i think originally um in the base game of wildlife park 3 this place was supposed to be like a place for maybe hippos or something i feel like it's like the same enclosure okay maybe we can go and not make it as big maybe like this like that Cool beans, and let's demolish the rest of the stuff that we don't really need. And okay, I like that. And then we can just um, paint the ground with some more grass uh, because, you know, I want to see where the river is actually going to go. Also, you guys, I just got back from school, so if my voice sounds a little bit tired, then... That explains it. I just got back from school. My class was from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And I had dinner with a friend. And yeah, I'm pretty, pretty worn out. But 
uh, you know, I really, really wanted to play this. I don't know why. It's just so much fun to. It's just so much fun for me to play this. I really, really love the Wildlife Park series. To be honest with you guys, I know that I'm also gonna like the Zoo Tycoon series. Um, and I'm so, so eager to try it out for myself. Um, when I finally have the time. And I'm gonna go ahead and just um, yeah, do that as well over there. And yep, cool beans. I think it's time to grab this water tool and just make a nice little river. Is it even considered a river if it's like not really connected on both sides? Uh, yeah, this is where we get technical into naming our bodies of water. <laughs> Oh god. Okay. Over here we have a really narrow strip of water. Oh crap, I forgot. We need to make like a bridge, right? <laughs> Keep forgetting. Okay, it's a little bit easier to do it like this. I'm gonna keep the blob edges, like I'm gonna keep the rough edges on this because I am gonna smooth this out in a little bit. And I think that the rough edges are just make it look a lot natural. Natural. Ugh, Felix, PewDiePie. He always says it like that. It's like natural. <laughs> okay, and let's see here. Let's flatten the ground. I think this is where I wanted to put it. Like that. I think that's pretty okay. I mean, there's not really much we can do, <laughs> cause yeah, that's I think that's literally the extent of what we're able to do at this point. Uh, and I don't really know if this is right here is still considered a river. Maybe it still is. Okay, and let's just make this wider here. I noticed that when I was rewatching my previous recording that the mouse that I have is just so loud. Unfortunately, I only have like one mouse for this computer and I don't want to take the mouse from my laptop. It's just a little bit of a hassle. So hopefully you guys don't really mind. I mean, some people probably like, oh my gosh, his mouse, kill it. But I'm just like, okay, I'm too... I don't, I don't really want to go through the hassle of like you know, removing the mouse from my laptop. <laughs> Even though that's not really a lot of a hassle though. That's not really that much work, but whatever. And I think that's pretty cool. Let's smooth up this area here. Like so. That weird pointy thing though. Yeah, we couldn't do anything about that. That's literally just gonna stay there. All right. Uh, okay, and then I'm just gonna smooth this so that- Ooh! We're running out of water! Holy crap. Okay, maybe like that instead. <laughs> Is this like the dry season or something? Because we are not- Okay, this is- mm -hmm. Okay, I feel like I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to this. No, I mean like I'm gonna I'm gonna smooth in the edges like of the riverbank itself, and then I'm gonna go and go back with the water tool, and kind of bring back some of the actual water. <laughs> it wouldn't be a river without the water. Oh, I hate how that pathway right there is like on a slope. I might have to do something about that later. All right, I mean, so far so good. I kind of like the shape of the river. I mean, yeah, I think it's gonna look a lot better later on when we actually have like some water in it and stuff. Unfortunately, this um, Wildlife Park 3, it doesn't have really, really large lots for the zoos, unlike Wildlife Park 2, um, which had like humongous lots. We don't really have really big ones in Wildlife Park 3, which is fine. Cause in Wildlife Park 3 there aren't really any there aren't really a lot of animals. Um, you know, so you don't really need to have such a large space for your park. But yeah, you guys got what I'm trying to say. Okay, I think this is good. Just having some a little bit of water. Doesn't have to be that much. Ah, uh, there we go. Just to make it look kind of nice and 
almost realistic. I also like increased my graphics as well. Um, I changed the lighting settings to make it like, um, I think it was, I don't know, I, I, I improved the lighting option and also the shadows as well. So I'm, I honestly think that you don't really notice it that much. Yeah, I noticed that you really can, you re it's not really that big of a change because it's not that noticeable, but it, it does look better um, later on when we have like some nice kind of like lens flares or something. It does look quite good. And I think I'm spending too much time on this river. I might do this, like I might do a lot of this off camera. So yeah. And just to make sure that we don't really have any sloping areas around our pathways. Because I hate looking at sloping pathways. Unless I do it intentionally. I don't really like pathways that slope. Because like that, that just looks really weird. So I'm going to flatten this area. See you guys. There we go. That's a little bit nicer. And flatter. Yay. Uh, and I think it's all nice and flat around. Okay. And then just, I'm going to make sure that over here... Had a little bit of a word seizure there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to make sure over here that all of the pathways are also um, nice and sloped. We can just pretend that there's like a tunnel underneath of this um, that actually connects the, the rivers and stuff. But yeah, okay, cool beans. Let's smoothen out this because I saw that was glitching a while ago. Okay. And yeah, let's get started on our Triceratops enclosure. Uh, Yeah. Hmm, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna go for the normal security fence, like so. And I don't think there's gonna be any straight edges to this enclosure necessarily. It's all gonna be curves, it's all gonna be organic. Like that. And let's see here. I do want to like make it as fluid as possible. That's why I'm taking the time to really shape it nicely. I don't want it to be like just a random shape. <laughs> you know, I want it to like look elegant. I want it to look um, nice and fluid. There we go. I think that's kind of fine. And I think I'm going to put the doorway over here probably. Uh, that's the, I think that's the only one that's big enough to fit in a gateway. Maybe somewhere here instead. I Actually, you know what? Let's put the gateway over here. There we go. Because most of the visitors are going to be coming from here. So, yeah. And, uh, of course, we need to have our water feature. And it's so weird, though, because we literally, like, right next to the water, but I just, yeah, we need to have a separate water feature just because it's something that I prefer to give to my animals. I don't really like looking at the water troughs. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them, but I feel like if I'm making, like, such large enclosures anyway, I might as well um, give them, like, these huge, like, huge, huge... <laughs> Donald Trump reference but I might, I might as well give them these like lake areas and stuff because also some some creatures also like to swim as well but yeah I love the ability to terraform you guys there's so much customization to this game to be honest like I really really appreciate it I always mention this in um almost all or in at least most of my episodes for this playthrough, but there are a lot of really good qualities in this game, and I really like it for those. Um, I feel like it definitely... I feel like people immediately give this, like, negative criticism because, you know, they're, they're comparing it to such a great game, Zoo Tycoon, and that is understandable, but I feel like people no longer, like, appreciate this game for its merits as well, and I'm, I'm here to show you guys like both the good and the bad stuff you know it's the good the bad and the ugly <laughs> so yeah and i'm really surprised that the developers are still working on this like um a couple of years after it's released. i think this was released in 2011 and it's already like maybe six years since this was released first so 
you know, that's a really long time. So you can you can kind of tell that they're committed to this game. Either that or they just really need to make money. Uh, it's so funny that one of the developers mentioned in um, on Steam community that they're kind of struggling to survive or something like that. They're like, oh, you know, it's not easy making a game that you like and also trying to make a living out of it. I think that's what they said. I'm not sure. But anyway, back to the enclosure. Um, Triceratops is actually one of like the more famous dinosaurs. Like everybody knows what, tri- what a Triceratops is. I think like alongside Stegosaurus and um, of obviously T-Rex and uh, you know s- some long necks. Because uh, the thing is, long neck dinosaurs. That's the common name, right? Like most people think of like sauropods as long necks they don't really identify each species specifically like oh what's your favorite like for example like somebody asks you uh what's your favorite dinosaur and some people would say like oh my favorite's like a long neck like what long neck dinosaur there's that's such a general answer right and like if they if they answered their favorite dinosaur as triceratops for example or stegosaurus they would say it specifically right you guys get what i mean hopefully i'm making sense but whatever or T-Rex, right? Or Spinosaurus. I, I I felt like I just thought that that was really interesting to bring up. Just a random observation. Okay, I think it's time to actually bring our first Triceratops here, just so that we would get a feeling of what this guy wants. All right, so we have like a bunch to choose from. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Baby Triceratops, Triceratops, male Triceratops for sure. I always like to start with the male ones. And I think I'm going to go for this one. It's eight years old. I'm going to go for this one. I usually go for the youngest ones. Oh, and it's quite large as well. And let's see what this guy needs. Um, it wants um, water, grass, and leaves, scratch and wallow, and um, offspring, herd size. Oh my god. Holy moly, it wants six other, I mean, it wants five other Triceratops. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Okay, so um, offspring and ground hardness 0 to 55. Okay, so it's pretty much okay. I mean, you guys can see that it's actually wallowing over there in the lake. So that's actually really nice. I didn't know they can do that. <laughs> I thought you had to like make a separate spot for them to wallow, but I guess not. Um, Triceratops, let's see here. This one's a baby. This one's a male. Let's go for another male Triceratops. Oh, wow. I like the coloration on this one. It's really nice. And I'm going to sterilize both of our males. And then for our females. Uh, hmm. And then the rest of the available ones are babies, but that's that's fine. Uh, okay. Okay. All of these are teenagers. <laughs> like, all of these are, like, either 16 or 19-year-old, which is interesting. Oh, this one is, uh... Oh, wow. This one is 45 years old. Interesting. And then the rest of the available ones are babies. So, yeah. I think we're gonna have to buy a couple of baby ones. Okay. We have one female Triceratops here, which is 59 years old. I'm going to go for the baby ones. I'm going to go buy two female babies. Cute. The baby. The baby. <laughs> okay. Random references. Okay. Oh, look at that. How cute. And obviously, they need, um, they need food. Uh, so I need to really quickly put some plants like ASAP I should have probably paused the game that would probably have been the better choice for this but whatever I can do this really quickly anyway oh my gosh you guys oh there's like so many triceratops like how oh my gosh and this one's pooping this one's pooping and everybody's pooping poop fest what the hell what the hell Okay. Okay. Just, just, just. Ugh. It's so funny though, like seeing so many turds. <laughs> like, they better be paying the zookeepers a lot of money because, seriously though, 
Like, who's gonna scoop up all of that crap? Literal shit. I don't even know why I'm making such a big deal out of, you know, the animals pooping. But the thing is, we don't really see a lot of poop <laughs> in media, right? I feel like that's like something that... I don't know, that's something that people usually avoid because it's kind of like taboo or something, or it's kind of improper, but holy poop. <laughs> the poop is real. I don't even know why I'm making such a big deal out of that. It's just so funny. It cracks me up. Cracks me up. Okay, I'm going to paint this over here, this like um, wallowing area. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add more um, planter areas over here. Look at the baby triceratops. And I love the level of detail on this because you guys can see that as they eat the grass, they actually, um, the grass itself disappears and the ground turns back into just ground, which is uh, really interesting, actually. Also, each plant, I believe, has a specific amount of forage that it can provide. So you have to make sure that you plant a lot of plants because you don't want to run out of forage unless you have like animal keepers who are keeping an eye on the animals like like 24 7 uh yeah it's it's good to have like a lot of plants so that you do not run out of forage all right so i'm gonna make this guy have like such a large radius and i actually want to make sure that we have a large enough radius for all of our animal keepers because one thing that I didn't realize in the previous couple of parts is that the dinosaurs poop, okay? They poop a lot. <laughs> so I'm gonna make sure that all of the animal keepers actually are able to reach <laughs> the animal feces. So yeah, so much poop talk, like so much potty humor <laughs> in these episodes, so weird. Okay, there we go. I think that is quite okay. I think we have quite enough poop coverage. Oh my gosh, everybody wants like some games. Some games. Let's see here, what does it want? Uh, it wants to scratch. And okay, yeah, it wants to scratch, obviously. I feel like this is like the default. I feel like all of the creatures that we put so far want the same exact thing. And I'm kind of not used to it because um, in the previous wildlife park games, I'm, I was kind of used to taking care of different creatures with different needs. But I feel like as we get to the variety later on, like when we get like some carnivores, uh, we probably will have to fulfill different needs eventually. Cool beans. And I think um, we just need to place in a couple more plants. I wonder if we can have some variety, actually. Oh, wow, look at these. I didn't realize we had new plants. Whoa, wow, wow, look at that. That is so beautiful. Uh, okay, this reminds me of like a little shop of horrors. Oh my gosh, you guys, with, um, who's the, what's the name of the guy again? Like, oh crap, I forgot his name. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors. He's the guy from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. That's my childhood. Ah, oh, so good. And then, what is this? Holy, that does not look good to me. That looks a little bit weird. Oh, it does have some variations, though. But I don't know. I feel like it still kind of looks a little bit... Uh, yeah, I don't like how that looks. That just looks really plastic. <laughs> And then, um, ooh, interesting. Very Jack and the Beanstalk-esque. I don't think, are these even like real plants? They do sound like real plants though, so that's really interesting, I think. All right, so um, I'm gonna place them on like the hilly areas because I felt like that, I feel like that would look really dramatic. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go ahead and actually just, um, do some terrain painting. A lot of this is terrain painting, you guys. Just marking, you know, where you're going to place stuff and um, making sure that everything is good. Because sometimes some ground textures are not compatible with different kinds of plants. You know, you have to really be careful. So usually the basic ground is the one that's compatible with most plant types. Um, 
so yeah that's why i usually like put the plants on the ground uh i also like to put some rocks as well just so that we have like some texture variety you guys get what i mean like i want to have some variety when it comes to the textures so i that's why i do put like some rocks textures and stuff like so and let's see here i also noticed that when the dinosaurs when they're walking sometimes like the earth would like be smoking <laughs> i'm not even sure if that's a pretty apt description but there's gonna be like like i don't know there's like some dirt on their footprints when they're like stomping and i'm just like wow that's very interesting detail actually i didn't i don't think that's a thing in the previous wildlife park games that i played i don't think that there is dirt that um that kind of like scatters <laughs> when the animals would be walking so once again i really really appreciate the detail okay let's actually throw in these plants once i'm done with these rock paintings okay i really really like these new ones i hope they're i hope they're compatible with our climate right here okay i guess we can put one right there I don't think the Triceratops are going to be able to actually, like, eat on this one. I'm not sure if they can. If they can, that would be pretty awesome. Okay, let's actually, like, look at the stats. So far, it's not complaining. So it's cool. Oh, feed height. Oh, this would be amazing if they had, like, sauropods, right? It would be amazing. Okay, some, some of the leaves are a little bit higher. Oh, that's so awesome ground hardness and temperature yes we are pretty much compatible with this plant so we can actually have quite a bunch of them and actually now that i think about it we can probably um put a bunch of these on our other enclosures as well you know maybe right there and then let's put another one Okay, I don't think I can put another one over there. Maybe here. Yeah, nah, nah I don't I don't want to like overcrowd. I feel like this is a good amount of plants, to be honest. Um, now that we realize that we, some of these are actually compatible with our environment here, I think maybe we can use other kinds of plants. We have these orange trees. We have these lavender plants. And I don't even know what this is uh quiver tree very interesting uh let's wait for it to complain if it does i kind of like it though what do you guys think maybe maybe for a more desert themed enclosure we can go for that i'm gonna go for like um okay let's place a couple of these ones just a couple or a bunch. <laughs> Can I place them over here? See, I'm really taking my time with this, you guys. You know, like, uh, I just, I just like, it. it feels very therapeutic to me. It's like, you know, when some people find painting therapeutic, I find playing games where I get to kind of relax and just, you know, um, create stuff. I feel really therapeutic. And relaxed but sometimes though some things kind of uh, fall apart <laughs> yeah there are some times when things fall apart and that's when I literally like cannot even handle uh, but most of the time I'm just like oh this is really relaxing I'm really happy I'm really really liking how this enclosure is coming out I really do Hopefully, I'm keeping my eye on this area right here because it's going to tell us, like, what our animals need. Uh, so, so far, the animals are content. Some of them are hungry. That's why it's not, like, a full 100%. And then since we don't have any visitors, we don't really have to think about this. And then the, the plants, I think some plants are actually complaining. Oh, okay. We have a dead plant over here, and I'm going to sell that. Actually, I edited... I added some plants over here, and I also did some terrain painting off camera, but nothing too too crazy. But let us go back to our Triceratops enclosure. 
and yeah just throw in a bunch more tropical plants the triceratops really like these monstera plants actually so yay and wow the sound effects are so you guys can hear that they almost sound like pigs yeah they almost sound like almost pigs right Really interesting. I wonder how much research actually went into this. I'm assuming, honestly, I'm assuming it's like not much. I mean, I pr probably a lot of research, but um, also probably like not to the extent that it's like scientifically accurate because I think that if it was like 100% accurate, I mean, first of all, I don't think you can ever be 100% accurate with dinosaurs because the, the truth is nobody really has seen them. So maybe they have come in like different colors that we've never seen before. Maybe they're all black. Maybe they, you know, nobody really knows. But I think the common widely accepted um, fact, I guess, or common widely accepted theory of how the dinosaurs look like physically is that they have feathers. So I'm pretty sure that a bunch of the creatures that we have in this park probably had feathers in real life, you know? They most likely have. Uh, so, yeah. I'm gonna place a couple more. And then I think maybe we can call it a day with this one, I think. I think that is a good amount of detail. And, okay. So yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Maybe we can renovate some parts of our park here and add a couple more extra plants. But I think I'm gonna do that off camera because uh, I don't really wanna make this too, too long. Um, so yeah, I'm, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this part up right here, okay guys? So once again, please don't forget to hit that like, favorite, and subscribe button if you guys had fun watching this video because it really helps out the channel a lot, okay? You all have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.